Hi everyone, we're here today. So I'm Hong Ben, and with me is Vivek Viswanathan. I'm Vivek, I'm a candidate for state treasurer, and we are here in Los Angeles County. We're in Northridge, and this is our third town hall. Yeah, and how many miles are you at right now? I'm at 481 miles, so, so I will hit 500 miles this week. For anyone who is tuning in for the first time, Vivek is running for um, statewide office, but he's not just running, he's literally running on foot, and he's running more than 500 miles across the state, and will make his way down to the San Diego border at the end of May. That's right. Right? Yes. So we have some questions that are coming in. A lot of people are asking you about different issues from student debt to economic policy to housing to health care. And one of the first questions that we got this morning um, in an email is actually from Quasi um, in California. And his question to you is on st student loan and predatory lending practices. Yeah. And in the email to us, Quasi said that he has um, a lot of student loan and interest rates are very high, but he's, and, but he's unable to really see how to really cut down on that interest rate and he wants to hear from you what are your plans so this is a really big one and it's something i actually thought a lot about when i was working on the clinton campaign and that's actually where we met and mm -hmm. we worked together on this plan working with senator sanders's campaign on not only how do we make college more affordable for future generations but how do we address the debt that people have right now and across the united states it's about 1.4 trillion dollars so this is a big problem and unfortunately there's not a lot happening at the federal level but there are things that we can do at the state level so number one we can refinance student loans and that's something that a lot of democrats in dc have pushed it hasn't gotten 60 votes in the Senate, although it's come very close. We can do that at the state level, either through a special vehicle, sponsoring legislation to do it, or eventually if we end up creating a public bank, which is one of the options mm -hmm. on the table, that bank can refinance student loans as well. And this is important because a lot of people like Kwesi are in these loans with sky high interest rates. Right. And the frustration is crazy because they are making payments uh, and yet that balance is actually getting bigger rather than smaller. So if we refinance those student loans, we make it easier for people to engage in income-based repayment, where after 20 or 25 years, that right. debt is forgiven, and it's not hanging around for their entire lives, because people feel like it's this albatross around their neck. So we can push more people into those programs. And finally, like Kwesi said, so many of these bill collectors and loan servicers are actually looking out for their own bottom lines rather than for the students and mm -hmm. graduates who they're supposed to be supporting. So we need to take a role, whether it's the treasurer, the legislature, the governor, to crack down on those people who are not doing right by students because it's not gonna happen with Donald Trump. So right. it's really up to us. And could you talk actually a little bit about what's happening right now at the federal level around that? Because I've been hearing something about there. I think they're eliminating some of the income based repayment. So there's just like. not much going on because all a lot of the people who uh, the Obama administration had cracked down on and made sure that these rules are in place, those rules are being reversed. So it's really important for us at the state level mm -hmm. to step up and saying, everyone does need to be held accountable for your behavior. If you're lending money to students, you have an obligation to them. You have a duty to them to make sure that they can get the opportunities that they have. And these students are in, in repaying their loans. Right. Sometimes they can't even find out their loan gets sold. Right. It gets securitized. Or sometimes they don't even realize that they're just paying the interest and not, getting, not making a debt in the principal. Exactly. That's a huge thing. Yes. Right. Um, so our next question is actually on healthcare, and it's from Jasmine, a physician in Sacramento, yes. someone you actually know. <laughs> so her question is, what is the state of healthcare coverage for Californians, and what do we need to do next? So healthcare is an interesting subject at the state level because we made so much progress during the Obama administration. Before the Affordable Care Act, there were 17% of Californians who lacked health insurance. Mm -hmm. And now with the Affordable Care Act, with the expansion of Medi-Cal at the state level, that number is down to about 7%. Uh, so about 5 million Californians have gained coverage through the Affordable Care Act, about 3.5 million through the expansion of Medi-Cal, and then another 1.5 million through Covered California through the subsidy and the exchange and that's that everyone talks about. that literally just happened. Yeah, right? this is just in the last ago. four or five yeah. years. So a lot of progress under Governor Brown, but we still have three million people who don't have access to insurance, and a number of them are undocumented immigrants. So right now the legislature is looking at ways on how to make sure that those immigrants get access to coverage. And you know they finally extended CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, at the federal level. So we have those things in place, but there are a couple other things we can do. We can make sure that even even with the repeal of the individual mandate that Republicans did in Congress, that we take actions to stabilize our insurance market. Second, we can make sure that we take actions to bring down the cost of health care mm -hmm. and ensure that we're engaged in collaborative practices. And those things together will also help lay the groundwork for some type of single payer or all payer system, which 
ultimately I think we're going to need if we're going to shift to a system right. where we can cover everybody and yet the costs aren't eating up the rest right. of the budget. And the single payer issue is a very big issue right now in the governor's race as well. That's right, yep. yes. Uh, we'll have to see how that's going to play out. Yes. So next question is actually a little bit less serious. It's from Thomas and he wants to know <laughs> about your campaign. So what are the challenges of running for a state treasurer? And how do you even get people excited about this race? Because it just seems like nobody's paying attention. <laughs> well, it's funny because, you know, I thought the number one thing would be, why are you running for a right. state treasurer? But it turns out before you can get to that, you have to get to who are you? And what is the state treasurer? Right. And <laughs> very few question. few people I've met, and we've been going all down the state, even know who the state treasurer is, what they do. Um, so a lot of this, and I think this is important for any campaign, is educating. And mm -hmm. of course, the real education is for me, from all the people that I meet. But at the same time, you know, having worked in the governor's office and having been on Hillary Clinton's campaign, we can both share our stories of what yeah. we've learned along the way. So I've been really enjoying the chance to talk to people about what is California's fiscal position right now? How does it look over the next year? How does it look over the next two years, five years, 10 years? And what can we learn from the last eight years, from uh, before Governor Brown came in, from when Governor Brown came in, and the new challenges that we have with you know who? So basically, in the biggest nerd running yes. for state treasurer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so, Hannah um, asks you, what is the question right here? Hannah Davis, Hannah from Davis, and her question is, what do you think is the best way to leverage private investment using public money? So the best way, so there are a number of really intriguing proposals around this. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first is when it comes to jobs. So, right. you know, right now we know that the job mix is changing. People aren't spending their entire careers with one company. We know that we're going to be about a million people short uh, in terms of the number of college graduates we need to fill the jobs of the future here in California. So at the same time, we also know that not everyone should need to get a four-year college degree right. to be able to make a life for themselves and their families. So one of the things we can do is as we expand funding for our community colleges, and there's a bill in the current budget to make community college tuition free, make sure that those institutions are partnering with local apprenticeship programs, mm -hmm. manufacturing programs, and that type of public-private partnership can really make a difference. Because that way, educators don't have to guess what the jobs of the future are. And then for people who are hiring, they can make sure that the people in school are already getting a leg up on the qualifications they need. So that's one thing where I think it can really make a difference. Uh, the second, in addition to education, is it when it comes to infrastructure. Now, there are oh, bad right. ways to do this. Very, very important issue. Yes, um, <laughs> and the bad ways to do this are mostly coming from Washington, D.C. At the same time, there are good ways to do, do this. And we know we're putting a lot of money into our high-speed rail system, mm -hmm. but eventually, for that project to really come to fruition, we're going to need some private partners to step right. up and provide some of the financing and making sure that they can get a return on investment. Uh, and then the third thing that comes to mind for me, and it's one of the most important issues for our state, and in fact, in some ways, the most important issue for our planet is the issue of climate change. So one of the things that I really enjoyed working on in the governor's office is making sure that we're getting all people, all stakeholders to come together and step up and find ways to reduce their emissions. And if public and private sector can work together on that issue, mm -hmm. the gains for our state and for our planet will be amazing. Great. Hannah has a follow-up question for you. She, yes. saw, she saw your video with Michelle Kwan on Friday. Yes. And this is her question. Can you comment on how, if you win this election, you plan to balance your responsibilities as state treasurer with your run for the 2022 Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody who watched that video will know that I have no risk basically, of qualifying for the Olympics anytime soon. Yeah, basically you just cannot skate your way to victory. Fun <laughs> that Annie loves so much. Yeah. <laughs> so we are pretty much wrapping up to our last few questions. Mm -hmm. um, and the last question you have is how will or how can you help undocumented immigrants in California? And this is definitely an issue that has really hit many communities in California personally, yeah. including my family. Yes. Um, and all the fear and all the crackdown on, you know, undocumented immigrants and the deportation actions that's happening under the Trump administration. Yeah. So what are some things that you can do around that? Yeah. So there are a couple of things. I think first, every statewide official 
from the treasurer to the attorney general to the insurance commissioner to the governor has to really make sure that protecting these people is a priority. And it's so important and it's going to be an ongoing battle at least for the next two and a half years possibly for the next six and a half years based on what happens. Um, but we see those threats coming every day. So number one, make it a priority. Defend SB 54. Yep. Defend our programs uh, to help and undocumented people. Yeah, so SB 54 is a bill that sharply limits uh, the requirements on state and local officials to cooperate with federal immigration authorities, especially when we in the state feel right. like they are exceeding their bounds and targeting people who really are doing the right thing and living their lives. Uh, so it's really important that bill just passed and the governor signed into law last fall. So it's really important that we protect it. Uh, the second thing is making sure that undocumented kids, families, adults, everybody have access to all the resources that everybody else has. So for example, we know, like we were talking about, that it's undocumented people who bear the brunt of the current rate of uninsured in California. Mm -hmm. And that's because many of the subsidies at the federal level are, are unavailable to them. That's correct, yep. yes. So we have to find a way to resolve that problem. The same thing goes for federal student aid. And we've done uh, a lot in California to make sure that undocumented kids can access, or anybody, you know, I use the word kids, but really anybody can go back to college or go to college for the first time. And if they're undocumented, they often don't get, they're not eligible for those resources at the federal level. So we have to continue stepping up for them at the state level. And that can include opening savings accounts for them. Right. or providing a whole range of other benefits that really, if they benefit, all of us will benefit. And then finally, making sure that everybody has protections in the workplace and access to good jobs. And you know, too often there are people, and we've seen these terrible stories of people who are working at their jobs and suddenly someone will come in and take them away, often without even getting a warrant, without any uh, pretext. Um, so we have to make sure that we're protecting our state. You know, the federal government, they control immigration mm -hmm. and customs enf enforcement. So they're, they, you know, the President Trump is setting his own priorities, but under constitutional law, they do not have the right to commandeer state resources. Those are the province of the state, and we have to make sure that we are protecting the kids and families in our state. So for every statewide official, it is incumbent that they do exactly that. Yeah. And this question is from one of your avid fans, Richard. Yes. He wants to know how many more days are left in your run. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe on Tuesday, which is two days from today, yeah. that is five weeks from election day. Uh, and just one week from the day when ballots are mailed out to people uh, who are voting by Early mail. Voting. Exactly. Yeah. So we are looking at May less... 7th. That's right. That Early voting is on May 7th. May 7th. <laughs> Primary election is on June 5th. So we are looking at under 40 days left to this right. election. Just to uh, so quickly. We've still got another 100 miles, more than 100 miles to go. Uh, but the fact is, if we've made it this far and we've made it to Los Angeles, uh, hopefully the rest won't be too hard, right? Well, Vivek, he's, Vivek has already done, he's reaching 500 miles this week, but we decided to extend the run <laughs> for us this May, all the way to the San Diego border, San Diego, um, Mexico border at Friendship Park. Yeah. And so that's going to add an extra 100 mile on That's it. right. So he's basically running <laughs> over 600 miles now. Exactly. But all, all the shirts only say 500 miles. So that's right. We're, we're just, we're discounting it a little bit for you. That's right. But, yeah. you know, if you're going to run the state, you got to run all the way to the I end, know, right? So finish. it's really important. Some folks are wondering if you're going to run all the way back, though. Are you planning <laughs> to do that? <laughs> we'll see. I think that's a conversation for after June 5th. All right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a nice break, though. Sounds good. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and hope to catch you the next one. That's right. See you next time.